Watch for trees there, Steven. Watch out for the rocks and wood. I'm checking for rocks too. It's pretty tricky navigating the waters here. There's trees, branches everywhere, and rocks too. There's a caiman up on the shore there. Man, it's full of caimans here. My name is Cyril Choquet. And I travel the world chasing monster hey. fish. The size of that fish. This time, I'm going after one of the biggest and strongest fish in South America. The red tail catfish. This monster lives deep in the jungle, in one of the most forgotten places on the planet. And getting there won't be easy. Watch out, the rocks. As civilization encroaches on the forest, I'm forced to push deep into the wild, into dangerous territory. Watch out. Careful, careful. That's crazy. We're surrounded by electric hills. In search of a real monster. Go back, go back, go back. Keep it off the bottom, keep it off the bottom. Yeah, yeah I'm trying. I'm in Guyana on a mission to catch a monster red tail catfish. I've caught small ones before, and let me tell you, the fight is incredible. So I can't even imagine what it's gonna be like catching a true giant. The red tail catfish can grow to over 150 pounds and they are known for being one of the most powerful fish in the Amazon. I'm in Georgetown, the capital of Guyana. The city is located on the Atlantic coast, but if I want to find a red-tailed catfish, I know I'll have to travel inland, deep into the jungle. However, I still want to know what the local fishermen think. This is catfish, right? Yeah, catfish. Saltwater catfish? Saltwater, yeah. And you don't have any freshwater fish at all here no, at the market? No, no freshwater fish, only saltwater here. And do you get any fish from the jungle here at all? No, the jungle is very far away from here. All right, thanks. I thought I'd find a few freshwater fish, but no, it's all saltwater. I ask around, and the local confirms that if I want to find a monster red tail, I have to go to a river called the Asikubo. What I yeah, want to catch is a yeah, red tail catfish. Yeah, you would catch it there. Yeah? How big do you think? Big like you, big more than you. Really? Yeah. That's what I want to catch my friend. Serious. You yeah? go there, as you go, you get contact for go there, you'll catch him. He tells me to get in touch with one of his friends who can take me up the river. But according to some of the people around here, the Esequibo River can be a pretty risky place. This is a piranha bite? Yes, this is a piranha bite. But he just come and he just bite and leave. Wow. Piranha bit me in the Esequibo River. Piranha is there in the river. They're very, very dangerous. Very dangerous. Oh, no kidding. Not only is this river dangerous, it's super far. I have to go to an indigenous village where I'll meet my contact. And from there, we'll start the adventure up river. The guy at the market told me it'll take about 15 hours down this dirt road. You must be wondering why I often try to try to get as far away from civilization as possible. It's, uh, it's exactly that, it's to avoid a man's impact on fishing. Because it's kind of sad, but it's uh, generally true. The more, the more people, the fewer fish. And in my case, I'm trying to catch monster fish, so I gotta go to some wild, remote regions of the planet. And we have to preserve these areas, or else there'll be none left. I've been on the road for a few hours already and I'm still coming across logging trucks. There's too much activity around. It looks like I still have a long way to go to get to the remote areas where I'm hoping to catch a monster. The light is starting to fade. This isn't the kind of road you want to be driving on at night. So I press on, hoping to arrive before total darkness. I finally arrive at the village of Fairview to meet Stephen, my local fishing contact. It looks like I'm arriving during some kind of a ceremony. I hope I'm not interrupting. Hi, Cyril. You must be Cyril? Yes, I'm Cyril. Hi, nice How to are meet you. you. Nice Hi. to meet you. <laughs> well, I came right in the middle of the show. Huh? Yeah, there's a traditional dance here. Uh, That's nice. There's uh, our ancestors. Always sport here before without music or guitar or any other instrument, you know. Okay. Let's just sing with a local drink and enjoy yourself. Wow. 
And how's the fishing, by the way? Big fish? Yeah, big, like 190 pounds, 200 pounds. Nice. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's really Monsters, nice. Monsters, you know, monster, monster fish. fish. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I'm uh, looking forward yeah. to catching some big fish. This morning, Stephen and I joined some villagers as they prepare a traditional breakfast of fish and bread made from cassava, also known as manioc. The women of the village first grate the cassava root into a pulp, then press it through a kind of weave in order to extract the poison. If the extraction isn't done correctly, the consequences can be deadly for anyone who eats it. Because uh, it can kill you, you know. Oh. That's a... That's a good way to get rid of your mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> she's not your mother-in-law, I, I hope, right? Yeah, she is my mother. <laughs> she's, you know, sorry about that. <laughs> it's surprising that even in this remote jungle village, most people have smartphones and can generate electricity using solar panels. How do you see the progress of civilization getting, you know, like the, the cell phones, the communication reaching you guys? And... To me, it's very good because it means it takes us out from the old time days. But at the same time, when you look at it, we are living our culture. Most of the young girls, you can't find them doing this. They don't know anymore? They don't want it anymore. It's nice, yes, but at the same time, you live in your culture. But clearly, she still has her traditional cooking skills. I can't wait to dig in. Natural food from the jungle, you know? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Mm. The non-poisonous version. <laughs> yes. Mm. It's delicious. Not my everyday kind of breakfast, you know? <laughs> Piranha and cassava, but it's really good. Really tasty. I like it. Mm. Really, really tasty. It's a pleasure for offering you my local food. Thank you very much. It's very good. The red-tailed catfish I'm looking for can grow to a monster size. If I do find one of these giants, my rod has to be strong enough to take the tension. And the drag on my reel has to be set precisely so I don't snap the line. You know, this rod may not look like much. It's not very thick or long. But I'm telling you, it's designed to handle some really big fish. I just tie the line to the tree so that I can set my drag properly. And at the same time, I'll be able to show you how much of a bend a big catfish can put on this rod. See, this is too loose. This is getting good. There are huge red tails here. So you don't want to go with any line less resistant than 100 pounds. That's the kind of fight I want with a catfish. Now that my drag is set properly, it's time to get some bait. We're looking for snails to, uh, to catch the bait fish, the small fish that we need to, uh, to catch the monsters. Take off the soft part and leave the harder part so it may look like a fruit from, from the, the tree. trees failing. Trying to mimic the fruit, right? Yeah. Now, Steven wants to show me how he quickly comes up with a rod in the jungle. Oh, yeah. Nice job, man. Great job for you. Good yeah. job. That's the next rod. Make it easy for you to get beat for us. Yeah. Beautiful here. Yeah. Now, we need to catch a small fish to use as bait for a monster catfish. So I tie on a small hook. Just to the edges, like... Yeah, as if this fruit are falling from the tree, right? Yeah. The idea here is to mimic a berry falling from a tree. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. The commotion on the surface attracts another fish, and Steven is quick to react, throwing his bait right in front of it. Yeah, you got one. Good job. 
Good job, Steven. Yes. Sometimes before you go big, you gotta go small. We start to make our way up the mighty Yasekibo. Steven takes us over some rapids to a deep calm pool where big catfish lurk in the depths. This is the calm before the storm. I got my finger on the line waiting for the, uh, even the slightest bite. I can feel everything here. And if, uh, if I feel a bite, I'll let go of the, uh, the line so that the fish doesn't feel any resistance in the line. Then I close the bill, pick up the slack, and then set the hook. And then the fight is on. But for now, it's a question of waiting. Hey, Steven, how's the bite of the red tail catfish? Is it brutal like a jiao or piraiba? No, no, it's a, a slow biting fish, yet sometimes it just bites and sits there and eat, you know? Okay. As soon as you strike, the head for caves. The head for caves, huh? This river is filled with rocks and lots of big holes for catfish to hide. If I get a monster on the line, I'll have to act fast to avoid breaking off. Here we go. There's one. That's a, a big cat you have there. Yeah, big catfish. Don't tell me he got off. Got off, man. I can't believe it. We keep moving up river in the hope of finding that monster red tail. But for some strange reason, the water's getting really cloudy. Look at the color of the water. All this silt in the water around here isn't normal and might explain why there are so few fish. But after a while, we found another spot where the water is clear. At this point, we've been fishing for over six hours. And although I got a good bite, I haven't landed a single fish. So I cast two lines out to double my chances of catching the monster. That's a good fish. Stephen quickly reels in the other line so he doesn't get tangled. <sighs> Sizable fish for sure. Jundia. Yeah. Leopard catfish. <clears throat> oh. A beautiful leopard catfish. Pound for pound, it's got to be one of the strongest cats. Look at the patterns on the back. That's camouflage. The black spots, that's what it's called a leopard catfish. Beautiful animal. Man, you're strong, buddy. Straight back to where it belongs. Soft. It's good, it's good. Good fish, huh? We keep moving upriver towards Stephen's camp, where we plan to spend the night. And suddenly, I understand why the river is so cloudy. Industrial gold mining. Look, I'm standing on a sand bank that was created by, uh, by that barge over there. The gold miners. And what they're doing is that they're dredging the bottom of the river to find gold. And in the process, they're making the water dirty, they're changing the natural course of the river, and destroying fish habitat. So I think I need to go even further to find big fish.
We spent the night at Steven's camp. The fishing here on the Isikibo is normally really good, but we saw a few more gold mining barges along the river last night, which might lower our chances of finding the monster around here. Hey, Steven. Hey, good morning, sir. How you doing, man? Prepare your nuts. Yeah, tying up for the... Uh, uh, big, the big fish. The monster. <laughs> yeah, the monsters. You know, sir, there is a place. It's an untouched place, really. I myself never explored the place. And no? I, no. My grandfather told me about the place. It had a huge red tail there. Really? It's How big? big? It could be like 90, 100. 100 pounds? 100 pounds red tail there. But it's just, it's very far away. It can be dangerous. In what sense? You can like take in the boat up the rapids, you can sprain your ankle, step on a stingray, um, electric hill, have to walk past the electric hill. Sometimes they may attack, get you. People doesn't really fish in that area. You have to put all efforts to get there. I like that. I like exploring new places. And if you haven't explored that place yourself, I, I definitely want to find out what it's all about. If you want a real big monster, that's the place. That's the place there. Wow, let's go, man. The satellite phone. This is the only way to reach the outside world. If anything happens, goes wrong, this is it. We can get extracted at least. venture even deeper into the jungle, away from all traces of civilization, towards the land once inhabited by Stephen's ancestors. To get there, we travel up the Ciparone River, a tiny ribbon of water that snakes its way through the dense rainforest. The water level here is low, which will be perfect for fishing, but it makes navigating the river very dangerous. There are all kinds of obstacles, like fallen trees and rocks. And because of the low water level, the predators are more concentrated. Suddenly, we come across our first major obstacle, rapids. But Steven is convinced he can plow through them in the boat. Yeah. He goes down current, circles around, and heads back towards the rapids at full speed. Out here in the jungle, we have to fend for ourselves. So Stephen wants to try to catch some dinner using his traditional fishing gear, a bow and arrow. Hey, Sarah, look, look, look. Look at the Yeah. Man, it's, it's so red. Yeah, it's a, it's a male one. It's this big? Yeah. Man, unbelievable. The size of this paku, it's got to be 20 pounds. And it has barely enough water to get to the algae. That's what it's feeding on. The paku goes back to deeper water but Steven tracks it through the rapids. I try to keep my eyes on the fish. It's there. While he stealthily moves in for a shot. Oh, that's true hunting right there. He's so stealthy. Hunting animals from the jungle is in Steven's blood. A true survival tradition passed down through generations. What a shot. You're a true hunter, my friend. Whoa. What a catch. What a shot, actually. I'm not quite sure what to call it. I think it's a shot. <laughs> yeah, it's a shot. Yeah. Man, that's a beautiful paku. Yeah. So you hunt like that all the time? Yeah, that's how I fish. You don't bother with a rod and reel? No, no, it doesn't bother with a rod, reels, nets, and so, because my parents teach me to yeah. hunt to use my iron bow to get food for us to eat. Yeah, that's really nice. What a great way to live off the land. We keep pushing upriver, 
looking for a monster red-tailed catfish. And at this point, we're far enough from man's impact that in theory, we should be seeing some big fish. Got a bite, got a bite. Something took my bait, but it sped it out. It's coming back, it's coming back. Here we go. It's a piranha. Careful, careful. It's not what I'm looking for, but it's a nice piranha. And a reminder of how dangerous the waters here can be. We push on a bit further, to a section where the river widens and the current slows down. It's an area where food accumulates and predators come to feed. Oh, here we go, here we go. Get it? Yeah, it's on, and it's big. Whatever it is, it's big, my friend. Stephen turns on the motor to keep up with the fish but the boat is stuck on some rocks. Thankfully, he manages to clear them. Oh, whoa, big payara. Payara, huge payara. Oh, it's about to break the line. Careful, jump into the boat. Careful, careful. Got it. Nice payara, man. Everything has teeth down there. There's always something bigger than you to chase you down and eat you. Continue upriver, but soon come up against another big obstacle. This is a long set of rapids, and the water here is way too shallow to navigate by boat. So we're gonna have to get out and push. To make our way through, we'll have to tread carefully through water, over rocks and fallen trees, so we can reach Stephen's ancestral land, the land of monster fish. I've had to do some extreme portaging over falls in the past. And it was pretty intense. Ah, here we go again. This time around, the rapids are much longer and it's very slippery. Plus, we have to be careful not to step on a stingray. The going is rough, but if you want to get to the monsters, this is the price you gotta pay. Crazy what you have to go through to get to some really remote spots. We're almost at the top, but the last part is gonna be the hardest to get over. It's gonna be tough here. Yeah. yeah. You okay? Yeah. With the motor, the gear and supplies, this boat has to weigh about 400 pounds, and we've been at it for almost an hour, non-stop. With one last effort, we finally clear the rapids. We made it. Made it yeah. We take a quick break. But we can't linger long, because we still have many miles to go, and not much daylight left.
we really underestimated how far we had to travel. And now, we're left trying to navigate these dangerous waters in the dark. Watch for trees there, Steven. Watch out for the rocks and wood. I'm checking for rocks too. Watch out, trees. With the water level so low and all these obstacles in our way, we have to move very carefully. Watch out to the left, to the left. Branches? Left, yeah. We have backup propellers, but if we hit a rock and our motor breaks, we'll be stranded. Man, it's pretty tricky navigating the waters here. There's trees, branches everywhere, and rocks too. And look at the Cayman there. We keep moving, but there's so many rocks and sunken trees. Plus, everywhere we point our flashlights, we see Cayman eyes. There's a Cayman up on the shore there. My God, there's Caymans everywhere here. That's a beautiful Cayman right there. Whoa. Man, it's full of Caymans here. Watch your head. Past there? Right here, yeah. Looks like. Watch out, the rocks, rocks, rocks. Yeah. It's really shallow. There's a bunch of rocks. Watch the rock here. Watch out, rock here, too. Another one? Yeah, watch out. Watch out here. Through it straight now, straight, straight. Watch out. Big rock, big boulder, big boulder, big boulder. Big boulder. Yeah. Oh. I was close. Between the trees, the rocks, and the caimans, I'm starting to think that it might be a good idea to call it a night. Hey, Steven, maybe we should stop and sleep on the boat, no? And continue in the morning. We have a lot of anacondas here. It's too dangerous to sleep in the river. We have to continue on to camp. Really? Anacondas can get on the boat? Yeah, we can. If we sleep inside, it will get into the boat and make we a dinner. <laughs> All right, so maybe we should push through the night. Yeah, we will continue through the night. We kept going all night. The sun is up. We are exhausted, but we're almost there. After three days pushing up river, looking for a monster red-tailed catfish, we finally arrive at Stephen's ancestral land. It's a beautiful place that has been left untouched for generations. Growing up, Stephen heard stories of all sorts of massive fish living in these waters. And being this remote, I don't doubt it. From this point on, we'll have to continue on foot. And out here in the jungle, hundreds of miles from any sort of medical help, we can't afford to let our guard down. Watch out, Syria. There's some bullet ants here. Oh, yeah? yeah. It's, man, it's a big nest. Yeah. yeah. Very painful. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very painful. Yeah, I've been stung before. <laughs> I know, it's, yeah. it's horrible. On one of my previous trips to the Amazon, I had to take part in a ritual where I was stung by bullet ants. <laughs> And the pain was so intense, I blacked out for hours. And it's unbelievable, the pain. It's said to be the, uh, the, the worst pain, the worst thing in the whole insect world. In the world, yeah. It's very painful. You've been stung before? Yeah, I was stung four times. Four once. times? At yeah. once? Yeah. yeah. Once it's, it's horrible, huh? Yeah, it's very painful. Yeah, so that's why you hang out uh, barefoot? Use my bare foot to feel it. <laughs> <laughs> I got better feelings in the jungle with my bare foot. Yeah, I know. You can feel everything, right? Everything. <laughs> That's why you gotta be careful where you step out of here. There are bullet ants, but there's also snakes, spiders. <sighs> Pretty dangerous. We keep trekking for a while until we find a good spot to set up camp. 
We set up here. Yeah, it's two it's trees. Put the pot here. Put it top here. You can tie a hammock here. Yeah, that's Put perfect. It, yeah. Oh, it's gonna rain. Yeah. We're gonna get poured on. Stephen and I make quick work of setting up camp. There isn't much daylight left, and the weather looks like it might take a turn for the worse. Better at tie nuts with fishing line. But it works. We set up camp in record time, and we got lucky. The storm missed us. That's a lot of work trying to catch some monster fish, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's a real privilege to be invited onto Stephen's ancestral land. Out here, we're in an area so remote that no one has fished these waters for decades. I'm the only fisherman Stephen has ever brought to this untouched place. No one's ever no fished No one's here. ever fished here. No? No. Wow. You're the first guy decide to bring here. Put a lot of effort in it, huh? Yeah, that puts a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> I hope I can catch you some fish. Me too, yeah. <laughs> to show you what's down here. <sighs> but thanks so much, man. It's a privilege. I'm honored to be here on your land. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, it's my home here. Well, you're lucky, you know, to to have this as your backyard. Yeah. It's, uh... Man, I feel so lucky right now. So privileged to be invited onto his land. Unreal. The next morning, we head out to catch some bait for red-tailed catfish. The pool at the top of the falls, right next to our camp, looks like the perfect place to do that. To get there, we have to wade through a small pool at the base of the falls. But we're not alone. Watch out, electric eel there. Just, well, just yeah, pop yeah. up to the surface. Just stand still. And there's another one there. Another one here. You see one there? Yeah. Man, there's another one that just came up to the surface there. Maybe we are surrounded by electric eel here. Electric eels are very dangerous, as they could electrocute us with shocks of over 700 volts. They're everywhere in this pool. We're surrounded and can't turn back now. We have no choice but to cross the pool. Look, look, look. Watch out, watch out. Wow. Be careful of your steps, yeah. Be careful of your steps. Very dangerous. Yeah. Go slow, man. This is no good. We fight our instinct to rush out of the pool. But we gotta move slowly, because if we scare them, they can shock us. Careful by your foot, by your foot, by your foot. Use your boat, use your boat. Push it. Wow, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy, man. But there are homes there, though. They live in the oh, holes yeah. there. Huh? How many can there be in this pool? They, I, see, I saw heads poking out everywhere. There'll be a whole dozen here. A dozen, yeah. huh? Yeah. On another trip to the Amazon, I spent days trying to catch an electric eel. And let me tell you, it wasn't easy. I don't know how much time I spent looking for one of these in Brazil. And <laughs> it looks like they're all right here. Incredible. Wow. Let's go. Let's keep fishing, man. Or let's start fishing. <laughs> we get to the top of the falls, and I cast a surface lure to try and catch some bait. I make the lure zigzag to create the illusion of an injured fish swimming. I'm hoping to trigger an attack from a wolf fish, prime bait for red tails. This is the smallest lure I have. But uh, you know, even a wolf fish this big will, will attack a lure this size. They don't care. They attack bigger fish even at the same size like them. Oh yeah, they attack very big prey for their size. Yeah. Wow, that's a wolf there, you yeah, have a wolf there now. Look at that, there is. Oh my gosh. Ah, here we go. Come on. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> good. Nice wolf fish. It's not a monster, but it's good bait, right? That's what we wanted, huh? Uh, it's a bit big for a bit. 
So I need to catch a smaller one. Huh? Smaller we can one, put yeah. this one back in the yeah, water? Yeah, I can release it back. Excellent. It's too big. It's not the right bait. But at least I can put it back in the water. Beautiful fish. Commonly called a wolf fish, but here in Guyana, they're called Aymara. Man, those fish are so explosive. I love the way they attack. Because they're ambush predators, so they sit behind a rock or a log at the bottom, waiting for prey to pass by. And as soon as it passes by, boom! We tend to say big bait, big fish. But in this case, Stephen really insists on catching a small wolf fish. He says that red tails here like the taste of the little ones better. So I keep casting until I get the right size wolf fish. That's a wolf. That's yeah. a wolf fish, yeah. 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 Uh, I think it might be too big. <laughs> No, that's the right size, yeah. Yeah, perfect size. That's exactly what we want. All right. There you go, my friend. Yes. <laughs> we get back on the boat to try and find a good spot to catch a red-tailed catfish. A few minutes later, we find a deep pool that looks very promising. Before it going to snap. Yeah. What do you think it is? You think it's a red tail? Yeah. Why it's like a red tail? Nice fish, still. I don't know what it is. Small oh. jiao. Jiao, yeah. It's not the marsher I'm looking for, but it's a nice jiao. Beautiful Zhao. Man, this fish gave me such a powerful fight. Unbelievable. Beautiful animal. Look at the patterns on this animal. Dark brown color, almost black on certain parts of the body. They get that from living in the deep holes of the river where they blend in with the environment. It's not a monster at all, but man, I love him. All right, buddy, you're going back. I've traveled far into the jungle and I've been chasing a red-tailed catfish for days. So far, I've managed to catch a couple of decent catfish, but they were far from the monster I'm looking for. And now, heavy rain has brought the water level up, which will scatter the fish. We're back at our camp to cook up the pack with Stephen cut with the bow and arrow and to talk about how this latest setback could affect our fishing. And what about the water level that's rising like that? You think it's, uh, it's gonna be tough on the fishing, no? Yeah, it, uh, it would affect the fish because I notice when the water level, the water is coming, the bait can be just around with them, but it doesn't take it, you know. Because we have a full moon right now, right? Plus the full moon is upon us, it's even make it worse. This is too bad because timing was perfect. The water level was ideal. Oh well, it's just gonna have to work harder. The water level is still rising from the rain earlier today and the fishing is gonna get worse. So even though we're tired, we just have to keep fishing. Especially because we know that catfish like to feed at night. We're gonna try fishing at night a little bit because catfish don't generally feed by sight. They feed by probing the bottom with their bubbles and by feeling around until they find something to eat. And in this case, I'll hope they find my bait. The 
おおおはいはいはいはいグッバイグッバイもう一つ。You hear the weird sounds that it's making right now? It's because it's pushing air through its gills and not water. What a monster. That's a big cat. Look at the size of that head. Massive head. Bone all the way to about here, to the dorsal fin. And then it tapers off into this powerful, this powerful tail. That's what gave me this crazy fight. Really powerful tail. And look at the business end of this fish. Big, wide mouth. That is designed to swallow prey whole. Look, how big of, of a mouth that is. And unlike sharks that have serrated teeth that are designed to cut through prey, these guys can't do that. They only have grasping pads, but they're, they're full of sandpaper like teeth. Tiny, tiny teeth here on the bottom part of the jaw. Same thing on the top part of the jaw. So they swallow the bait whole. They're, it's crushing my finger right now, my thumb. Beautiful creature. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Ramin.、Yeah. Sorry I got you all wet. No, it's okay. It's a wet dog. That's a nice fish. Nice fish. You make me really happy right now. That's、me、exactly、too. what I've been looking for. Me too. When you're happy, <laughs> I'm happy too. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. It's been a real adventure. First, I took a very long road to escape the impact of civilization on fish populations. But even in this remote corner of the planet, human activity continues to have negative consequences. So, with Steven, we traveled further into the heart of the jungle. And despite the obstacles we faced, crazy what you have to go through to get to some really remote spots. Watch out, electric eel there. We managed to catch a giant red tailed catfish I was looking for. <laughs> Look at the size! <laughs> This red tail, 